Good morning, mobile filmmakers and photographers. Welcome to Mobile Focus. Now, we have a special treat just for you guys today. We have a three-way fight between Hazelblad, Hazelblad, and Hazelblad. Oh, and if you're new to this channel, hi, I'm Jere. And this entire channel is shot on smartphones. Right now, I'm being shot on a Mi 10 Pro in 8K. Without any further ado, let's go over the specs and why these cameras are here on the desk today. Now we're going to start with a OnePlus 9 Pro. This is the newest camera that incorporates the Hasselblad color science and technologies to make it look as good as they say. Next, we have the Hasselblad 907X, which is their newest medium format camera, hence that giant sensor. Now that's a big sensor, much bigger than a cell phone and even bigger than a lot of full frame cameras. A lot of full frame cameras. Every full frame camera, <laughs> anyway. Next, we have the Hasselblad Moto Mod. Now this one shoots on a paltry, small, one over 2.3 inch sensor, but it does have the 10 times optical zoom, so you have a focal length essentially from 24 to 240 millimeters, which is something that none of these other devices can do, which might give it a leg up in a competition later on. Now, if you look at the specs between all of these, we have the OnePlus 9 Pro shooting in 50 megapixels, as well as the Hasselblad 907X, as well as the, well, no, the Moto Mod only shoots in 8 megapixels, which is going to severely hurt it later on. And if you look at the video specs, we see the OnePlus 9 Pro shooting in 8K on both the wide and ultra wide cameras, and 4K 120 FPS on that camera where we have the Hasselblad only shooting in 2.5K video. But with that heavy or that bigger sensor, we should see a difference in depth of field or a difference in, uh, let's say, quality between these and the cell phone cameras. And as we move on to the Moto Mod, we're only shooting in 1080p video, which is weird because the main camera can shoot in 4K. But when you put the Moto Mod on, the Hasselblad Mod itself can only shoot in 1080p, which is actually pretty sad. This is not that old of a camera and every phone was shooting in 4K, so has a blad. I'm not sure what you were thinking when you did that. Now, we're gonna do something I don't see a lot of other people do when they're comparing cameras to smartphones. We're gonna match the focal length on each one of the OnePlus 9 Pro cameras. So that means the 23 millimeter wide lens, the 30 millimeter ultra wide lens, and the 77 millimeter telephoto lens are gonna be matched with the 30 millimeter has a blad main lens, the 90 millimeter telephoto lens, and a 21 millimeter ultra wide lens. Now you might be saying to yourself, those numbers don't quite match up, but you have to take into the fact that the Hasselblad sensor is bigger than a full frame sensor. So you have to apply a 0.8 crop factor to each of the lenses. Now, if I get my handy dandy uh, notepad with the calculators out, we have the 30 millimeter matching the 24 millimeter after you take into account the 0.8 crop factor. And remember you have to multiply the millimeter, the focal length by the crop factor, so 30, times 0 0.0.8 equals 24 millimeters. And we did the same for the 90 millimeters, which gives us to 72, which is really close to the 77 millimeters on the OnePlus 9. And the 21 millimeters, right here, you multiply it by 0 0.8, we get 16.8 millimeters, which is the closest I can get on this camera system to the camera system that's on the OnePlus, the OnePlus 9 Pro. Why can't I say that correctly? And then we have this, which I cannot put an ultra wide camera lens on, but since it goes from 24 to 240, we can equal the wide angle and telephoto with this range. And now with all that being said, we know what we're here, we know what we're here to do. Let's go outside and take some pictures and some videos and some test shots. We're, we're gonna do a lot of stuff when we go outside, but you know, let's go. Babe, going out. Put me on the set. <laughs> <laughs> she got the front backpack. <laughs> got is, the cup holder. This is making me excited. Like, whoa! I didn't think about this. Is great. <laughs> well, I guess we're only doing two devices because the Moto Edge is broken. Ugh, sad. It's times like these where I really wish the Hasselblad had a flip down screen. So if I wanted to take a picture, say for instance of this parking sign, I don't have to crane my neck quite as much to see it. Whereas on the OnePlus 9, all I have to do is take this out, point it up, and since I have a bigger screen, I can take that picture and keep going.
So one thing that I find annoying, especially compared to smartphones, and I guess is all cameras in general, is with the Hasselblad, now that I want to take a wide shot of the Tequila Mama Tequera, and of course, Dwayne The Rock Johnson, I want, I'll want i have to go take this lens off, take the hood off, put that on, put that in, take this off, put that on, <laughs> Drop the lens. <laughs> Make sure the camera reads it. <sighs> and now I'm ready to shoot. <laughs> and that's too much. Oh, forgot to even take the lens cap off. But now with the smartphone, let me see how to get this shot. And now with the smartphone, all I got to do is if I need to change lenses, I just, uh, I just press a button and now it's changed. So much simpler. Whew. I don't know, man. It feels like I'm shooting the Hall of Justice. Now, as I walk around the city shooting with both of these cameras, I'm finding that they're a lot more similar than I was led to believe. Now, the pictures on the Hasselblad and the Hasselblad both come out looking vibrant, as you can see in the reds and the yellows, but keep it reined in so they still look very natural. Good job, Hasselblad, on both of these systems. Now, the difference I'm going to talk about is in the detail. Both of these cameras shoot 50 megapixels, but as you can see on this picture, my face is a lot more detailed on the Hasselblad, especially zoomed in, than it is on the OnePlus 9 Pro. Now, it looks a lot more muddy and a lot, I guess, more digital than I would let on to believe. And what I had to do to even curb some of that is change the color profile from none to matte to retain the better colors and retain more natural detail in the shots. So what I'm noticing from shooting portraitures with both of these cameras is that the OnePlus 9 has really good face tracking. And when I punch into portrait mode, which gives me a 50 millimeter range, it really does do a nice job of keeping her in focus and locking that in. Whereas the Hasselblad, it has no such face tracking to speak of. So when I need to go and take a picture of her, I actually have to move my focus point, get focus on her, and then snap the shot. And when I want to actually take a certain shot, I want to take quick shots, it's very cumbersome to use and it's just not fun. But on the other hand, the OnePlus 9 Pro doesn't allow me to take portraits with the telephoto lens. So this trade off some both sides doesn't make any sense. So these are my final thoughts on the both of these cameras before I would go back and actually take it on the computer and look at it. So what's going on with me is that the Hasselblad camera, even though I do love the pictures that's coming out of it and it's taking, it takes, uh, it's, a, it's just too cumbersome to use and enjoy right now, especially I'm used to shooting with full frame cameras, even Fujifilm medium format cameras and different cinema cameras, and they're all kind of built for the job. But the Hasselblad seems to be too annoying to use. Like for instance, the grip, even though it can hold the camera up pretty nicely and it has a lot of controls on it, it's not ergonomic to use. So when I want to take a picture, I got to actually put my finger above and crane it in a way to take the shot. Now you can imagine how crazy that would be if I am low shooting like this and trying to do that, I'll better take the photo with my thumb than with my actual finger. But with the OnePlus 9, I do love the pictures coming out of that too as well, and especially the ergonomics are just much better. Plus, I still have a grip for it. Let me see if I can actually pull it out real quick. 
And this allows me to really grip the camera as well as have a shutter button so I can take pictures of it whenever I want to. And this solves a lot of the problems with the ergonomics with a phone for me, but the problems with the OnePlus 9 is that it really limits you software-wise when you're doing certain things. Like for instance, I alluded to the portrait mode where you're shooting in 3.3 times, which is close to 77 millimeters. I would love to take portrait shots with that, but they don't allow you to, and the sensor on the camera is too small for it to actually give you any noticeable depth of field. That coupled with when you're shooting in pro mode, you can only shoot raw in 12 megapixels and not 50 megapixels where you would like to use that extra resolution to push and pull and get a little more detail out of the shot and it only limits you to 12 megapixels and you cannot use the ultra wide lens when you're shooting in pro mode which i just think doesn't make any sense even other manufacturers like xiaomi let you and oppo let you use what's going on which is you know same brand so i'm not sure what's going on so one person seems to be limited by software and the, and the hazard blast seems to be limited just by human physical capabilities but once you do get that shot, I think that the pictures out of both of these devices are phenomenal and I think they're definitely worth the money if you can overcome those challenges.